Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting. And one of the biggest just broke after I finished recording, so a little special dive in here. I'm recording later in the day that uh, Disney with ESPN, Fox Sports, and Warner Brothers Discovery with their TNT Sports and other sports networks out there have teamed up to launch a new sports-focused streaming service that will give you access to all the channels of content from ESPN, Fox Sports, and Warner Bros. Discovery content. This will be available through Hulu, ESPN+, Plus, and Max, and probably other services in the future. We'll have to see the details of this. But really big, big news here. The fall of 2024, you'll be able to subscribe directly to these and get their sports. Now, we'll have to wait to get a lot more details on this. Very few details have actually been announced. We don't know pricing. We don't know exactly what may be included, what may be not. Is this just, for example, the games, like um, Max has a sports add-on service where you can get just the games. You don't get a 24 seven feed um, there. If so, you know, what will it be priced? Will this be a 24 seven feed of Fox Sports FS1, uh, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, et cetera? Or will this be limited? Is Big Ten Network gonna be included? You know, Fox is in this, Fox owns the majority of the Big Ten Network. Is that included in this or not? There's a lot we have to figure out with this. This could be a killer for cable TV though. And the number one reason people still subscribe to cable TV and streaming services like YouTube TV, Hulu Plus Live TV and others is sports. Well, if we go all in on this with um, this being available here at a reasonable price, it could be a big killer. What's the price point? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. If it's too pricey, if they get close to the 40 plus dollar range, Without having locals, that's a big question. What about local channels? ABC, NBC, Fox, CBS content here. If that's the case, then maybe people would still try to lean towards, hey, well, for 40 some bucks, I get this, and then I'll just go get uh, YouTube TV, Hulu Plus Live TV, or others. If it comes in a 30 or lower category, now you have a real question. If I can get an antenna for CBS games, and I can get all this through here at 30 bucks a month, let's say, then you got a real killer app here that could put a huge dent in YouTube TV, a huge dent into cable TV in particular. We'll have to see until we learn more, but it's, it's amazing. Each one of these companies, Fox Sports, Disney, and Warner Brothers Discovery will own about one third of this service. Kind of goes back to the old Hulu days when Hulu was owned by all, all the major broadcasters in different percentages. I don't know, I'm kind of excited about this. These are kind of the killer sports streaming app we've heard for a while. Now, they're, they haven't confirmed this, but I'm assuming this means the standalone ESPN app is not gonna happen. ESPN's gonna be, their streaming service is this here. We'll see how this all plays out. But leave me a comment, let me know. Do you think this will work? What price point would you want? Be realistic, it's probably at least gonna be in the high 20s, low 30s minimum. Well, I don't know, we'll see how it plays out. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Now let's go back to what I recorded earlier this morning, and here you go. Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, Sling TV wants to pay you to watch television, Pluto TV is adding a ton of new channels from NBC Universal, and Friendly TV is also adding a new channel. These stories and a whole lot more coming up in a quick minute. First though, if you're new here, you can find all these stories I talk about in the first pinned comment down below, and in the show notes, I'll put a link to each story so you can read them for yourself. Come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. It really does help us, and hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of television, but still watch the shows you enjoy. So with that said, let's dive into it. Sling TV is launching a rewards program with a watch to win giveaway. Now they're gonna be giving away $25,000 in cash prizes. So with a grand prize of 5,000, you enter the sweepstakes by watching 30 minutes of Sling TV every day. So every time you watch 30 minutes, or every day you do, you get an entry into the giveaway. Uh, and the more days you watch, the higher the chances are for you to um, win. It's a pretty fun little um, competition. There'll be 26 um, winners for 500, three winners will get 1,000, two winners will get 2,000, and you have and 30 with um, 32 winners in total for all this. You have until February 19th to enter. So you can sign up for a free trial of Sling TV to get into it, I'm assuming. I don't didn't see anywhere, read the terms that you had to be a paying subscriber, but something to think about. 
check it out. Link in the show notes if you want to learn more about it. But a pretty fun giveaway from Sling TV right there. All right, if you are a fan of Pluto TV, the free ad-supported streaming service, right there it is. Um, they just announced they'll be adding 14 new channels from NBC Universal. This joins existing channels from NBC Universal already on Pluto TV. With the addition of channels like American Crime, Real Housewives Vault, Top Chef Vault, Golf Pass, NBC Sports, Low House on the Prairie, The Lone Ranger, Murder, She Wrote, and many more are all being added to Pluto TV. This comes as Pluto TV also rearranged its categories, adding some new categories. Now, categories are how you find content of channels. For example, they have a game show category, a movies category, a reality television um, category, and that allows you to find channels dedicated to that area. Um, they're doing that. They also have a uh, Black History Month channel. Don't It's not called that, but it's basically what it is. Um, focusing on all um, things African American as we celebrate Black History Month. They also have a pop up channel. They do like that quite often. Check it out. Pluto TV has added a ton of new content. Again, if you haven't been trying these free ad supported services, and you just think, oh, I did it a long time ago and they didn't have anything I liked, nothing good on them, give it a try again. The quality of content on Pluto TV and others has skyrocketed. All right, Friendly TV. Is adding a new channel. Bounce Television is being added to Friendly Television. Now, this is the third new channel this year added to the um, Friendly Live TV service, joining Laugh and Court TV. Starts at $6.99 and goes up from there depending on what package you pick. But Friendly TV is now adding another channel. Link in the show notes down below if you want to learn more about Friendly TV. I have a full channel list down there. All right, CNN is revamping its morning. Now, CNN is um, doing this shortly after revamping it before, but as they continue to struggle to find viewership, CNN is redoing CNN this morning, changing up the hosts and the lineup for it. And they're also doing a big push into digital. Now, we talked about how they may be launching a paid digital video service again for phones. We'll see what's happening there. But they are rearranging the morning lineup. CNN is struggling viewers. It's not just CNN. Most um, news organizations lost viewers in 2023, and that's something ex expected to continue in 2024 as people move online to places like YouTube, Google, and others to find their news. Let me know, do you still watch a lot of cable network news, or have you switched mostly to online ways to get your news information? All right, Dish has won another massive IPTV lawsuit. Dish has been on a warpath, not just them, but they're one of the main pushers of this cracking down on illegal IPTV live services. They've now won $3 million from DataCamp to comply with strict notice and takedown practices. Their argument is DataCamp failed to properly take down IPTV services off their network when they were notified of it. Because of that, they reached a settlement to avoid uh, maybe a larger one for DataCamp to pay Sling TV $3 million to close up this deal. Uh, really interesting. Uh, Dish is still very dedicated to stopping illegal te or television streaming uh, for a variety of reasons. Some of this content is exclusive to Dish. They have some international content that only airs through Dish's international programming. And also they firmly believe that by shutting down IPTV services it makes people more likely to subscribe to legitimate services. Look for this to become a bigger trend. The war on IPTV is only getting started. All right, deal of the day. The Fire TV Cube is on sale. Not the best price ever, but one of the better prices we've seen this at, $114.99. This is down from $139.99. I believe, somebody correct me, am I misremembering that price? But the Fire TV Stick 4K Max is also on sale for $39.99. The new one, again, not the best price ever, but one of the best prices we've ever seen this at. If you're looking for that deal, I'll put a link to it in the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment. You can find it on Amazon there. Great news for YouTube um, TV executives. YouTube came out um, today and announced some goals and some information about how YouTube was doing it. In there, they announced that YouTube TV now has 8 million subscribers. That's almost double what uh, the next competitor, Hulu Plus Live TV, has right now. They have about 4 million subscribers. Now, uh, YouTube TV has 8 million subscribers. Honestly, when you take together some of the smaller services, you can bundle about half of the live TV services together and you wouldn't add up to the 8 million subscribers YouTube TV has from the best numbers we can find on that. YouTube TV is absolutely dominating right now. Now, a few things helped them. NFL Sunday Ticket was a huge push. It really 
probably added a lot of subscribers. The last numbers we got were they were at about 5 million. It was widely expected they would add 2 to 3 million subscribers with the addition of NFL Sunday Ticket because not everybody needed YouTube TV. They could go get NFL Sunday Ticket, pay a tiny bit more, and get through YouTube if they didn't want to leave their current TV provider. So with that, that's definitely helped. Now the question is, can they hold on to these subscribers? Well, a lot of people cancel and leave YouTube TV. If you're a sports fan, there's still a lot of sports coming. March Madness is about to get started. NBA playoffs and others are coming up. But it's also coming into the summer after that where YouTube TV does not carry a lot of regional broadcast RSNs, regional sports networks. Could that see a drop? We'll see. But NFL um, Sunday Ticket will be back this fall, and I'm sure that will help them continue to grow where other services are struggling. All right, if you've had Amazon Echo Show, you may have noticed some new cards, some new um, displays on the home screen. Amazon's been rolling out a big update to bring feedback more prominent on your Echo Show where you can say you like this kind of card, you don't like this kind of card. Cards are where they tell you interesting facts, weather, information about Amazon orders you've had, and more. Well, now you can go in there and um, thumb it up or down and be able to tell people, Amazon what you like, what you don't like. Amazon's been working very hard to update the Echo Shows and they reportedly are working on a paid version that will come out later this year. We'll see how that plays out. All right, let's dive into the new question of the day. Every day I like to answer a question and I need your help. Leave me a question. Start Leave it in the comments down below. Start it off with something like a question for Luke. So I know it's something you want me to answer here and I'll do my best to answer them in the questions down below. So with that said, let's dive into it. Um, Dennis asks, Luke, with older content being removed from streaming services, we just talked, I'll stop real quick, we just talked recently about Disney Plus and Paramount Plus dropping older content to lower their costs. Uh, do you think this content will be available um, to other services, especially free ad-supported ones? So with that, yeah, so already one of the biggest winners is actually Netflix. Netflix has been really winning, right there they are, really winning this. For exactly, uh, example, we've seen after Disney pulling a bunch of content off of Warner Brothers Discovery when they launched their own services, they're now bringing some of this content back. Netflix is profitable right now when many services are not. Some of that's because they've had a, they got to slowly build their audience over the last, what, 15 years now for their streaming service. It's been about 15, right? How many years? Leave me a comment. Well, with that, that, that allowed them to spread the cost out, the cost of building up their servers, their networks, and more. Instead of just launching the last few years and having to have all this huge, massive server costs, marketing costs, acquisition costs, Netflix has been able to spread that out over quite a few years. So they've been a big winner, but we're also seeing content move. We just talked about NBC Universal moving content to Pluto TV. I think that will continue to happen because it doesn't do much good having this sit in the vault, right? Content just sitting there not being used isn't worth it. Reselling it, like we saw with Star Trek Prodigy from Paramount Plus when they canceled it and didn't want to air the second season, to Netflix who paid for it, was good. I suspect we'll continue to see that trend with things like Pluto TV, Tubi, Crackle, Redbox, Freebie, the Roku channel, and more, all getting content from other providers because even if you just do an ad revenue share deal where you only get paid based on the ad revenue and there's no upfront cost, which some of these deals are, I think that's a win-win for everybody involved. So yeah, I do think we'll see, continue to see more content move to other places and more content being made on free ad-supported services. Well, that's it for today. I hope you had a fantastic day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. We'll be back again tomorrow with another video.